Thank you. Good afternoon to everybody. Uh, we have exactly 11.58. We have two minutes. We're recording. We have one minute. World class. The North Rock School District Office of the Superintendent agenda for the special board meeting held at the administration office on 2400 Pop Willow Street, North Little Rock, Arkansas, 72114. Due to the COVID 19 pandemic, the meeting will be held via Zoom video conference for participants. Viewers will be able to watch VA North Rock School District Facebook page live stream. At this time, uh, Monday, September the 28th, 12 o'clock p.m., I officially call this meeting to order. Ms. Cole Quick, please call the roll. Sandy Campbell. Here. Elizabeth Huggins. Rochelle Redis. Here. Tracy Steele. Cindy Temple. Here. Natalie Wonkum. Here. Dorothy Williams. Here. Thank you. At this time, we will have uh, action item, new business, two items, legal transfer and the budget for the year. The presenter will be Mr. Stone, the Executive Director of Students and Equity Services. Mr. Stone, you may proceed. Good afternoon, Madam President, board members, uh, Dr. McGee. Uh, today, we have uh, a family that moved from the North Little Rock School District into the Jacksonville School District, and they are asking to remain in North Little Rock. And today I have presented before you, I have a legal transfer request from Jacksonville, who's already signed off, uh, releasing them from their district to allow them to continue in the North Little Rock School District. And I'm asking for a favorable vote to uh, allow these three students to remain in the North Little Rock School District. May I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I move that we accept the recommendation from um, that Mr. Stone has presented uh, to allow those students to remain in the North Florida School District. Do I have a second? Second. It has been moved and properly second that we accept um, the legal transfer presented by Mr. Stone. Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, none. So the motion is carried. Are there any other items, Mr. Stone? 
No, ma'am. Thank you. I, I, I left the legal transfer of paperwork with Ms. Colquitt for you guys to sign at your convenience. I just need that signed so we can file it away. Not, Jacksonville has already signed their board members, and so we need your signatures just to file it within the North Florida Rock School District. Thank you, and have a great day. Okay, and thank you. And board members, those of you, when you have an opportunity, you can come to Central Office, and Ms. Colquitt would have those papers available for you. And thank you, Mr. Stone. At this time, we will have for the year 21 budget presented by Mr. Brown, the CFO. And the budget officially starts on page three. Mr. Brown, it's on you. Okay, thank you, uh, Madam Chair and board members. Um, I'm gonna share my screen with you and say what we what I sent to you. Are you able to see that? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk through uh, the fiscal 21 budget. And uh, first of all, I just want to go over some um, vocabulary that we may use or see uh, in this presentation. Um, we have, of course, revenue, that's money that's coming in and expenditures, money going out. We have bonded debt payments. That's our uh, payments on our buildings uh, that we use our debt service millage for and additional funds. Um, we also have state, local, and federal uh, revenues. We have different sources and we'll be talking about all of those. So the first one we'll be talking about is going to be the local and state. Those are all in fund two. And then federal is fund six. Our building fund is fund three. And then our bonded debt payments, they come out of fund four. And child nutrition is fund eight. So this is a summary of all of the funds that we deal with throughout the year. Federal and state is fund two. Federal is six. Building fund, fund three bond payments out of fund four and child nutrition out of fund eight. We do have a fund seven. The fund seven is our activity account. So every school organization that has uh, an activity account is out of fund seven. So let's talk about our revenue sources uh, for local revenues. That includes, when we say local revenue, we're talking about property taxes. Uh, we're talking about any type of excess commission, any type of land or facility sale that we may uh, embark on, any type of severance tax. Our um, budgeted amount for local for this year is $35,606,000. From our state revenue sources, we have uh, foundation funding, we have uh, the URT, the 98% URT collection guarantee. We also have student growth or decline, or, uh, declining enrollment funds. We do have declining enrollment this year, uh, the funding for that. We have ESA, that was formerly NSL. Um, we have debt service funding, professional development, mentor teaching grant, that used to be what we call Pathwise, if you all remember that catastrophic loss funding, early childhood special ed, GT, ELL, our ABC program that funds our pre-K, ALE that funds our alternative learning environment, high gains ratings, um, that has been awarded to uh, some schools in our district the past two years for having high gains, um, and then uh, we don't have Smart Start Literacy this year, but it has been there in the past. So all of the, that category uh, totals to $48,910,324. So we have, state, we have state and we have local that we've put on the list so far. Then we have federal revenues, and this includes Title I, it includes Title IIA, Title III, Title VI-B, that's special education, early childhood special education, Medicaid catastrophic, RMAC, ROTC, Carl Perkins. So has uh, some of Ms. Ratliff's funds, 
some of Miss Alexander's funds, uh, and then uh, some additional funds like ROTC and Carl Perkins in that group. That group uh, totals 14.7 million, so 14,780,968 for this year. Uh, our activity accounts, again, those are fund sevens. Right now, all of the activity accounts total $558,882. So I just wanted to give you some uh, big pictures, uh, things that uh, as a board member, people may ask you uh, in the community, they may be interested to know how much of our budget is federal dollars. And if they ask you that, based on this year's budget, the federal dollars are 12.4% of our budget. If they ask you how much is our state, uh, how much our state's contributing, that's 49%, local revenues, 36.8%, and other is 1.8%. So our total revenue budget for this year is $99,856,174. And um, I've got a graphical representation here, so you'll see that the state provides uh, uh, almost half of our budget. And then federal uh, provides 14% of our budget. Actually, that's 12% uh, of our budget. This one is 35% of the budget. So that gives you a graphical representation of those numbers. So is there any uh, questions regarding revenue at this time? Uh, Mr. Bryan. Yes. So in the event that we would have snubbed our nose at the governor and we would have done our own thing, we would have lost out possibly that 49%. Correct. Yeah. Okay. We've withheld state funding. Right. Which he threatened yeah. to do. Right. Yeah. And you know, then U.S. Department of Education had also threatened to withhold their funding as well. So yeah. That could have been both the green and purple sections of our budget. Okay. All right. Thank we you. Were, we were basically over a barrel there. We had to do what was being communicated to us or mm -hmm. we would have lost uh, quite a bit of our funding. Um, I, I have a quick question. Yes. Okay. What's the other? Other is, um, that's our uh, activity funds, this amount right here. Whoops. This uh, 558,000. It is all of our activity accounts. So, okay, I got it. That's our schools have like student council. Um, we have some uh, high school has um, a lot of activity accounts. I mean, there's a lot to uh, name there. And then all of our athletics have ath uh, activity accounts. Some of our schools have grants that are stored in activity accounts. So the value on that right now is 558,000. So that's that line for other, and that's that small liver right here. I thought it was, but I just wanted clarity. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Brown. Yes, ma'am. I want to ask the question. Uh, in the due process of looking at our gains of what we would have, uh, how does our, enrollment look as providing funds you know you say that usually come in in the spring of the year yes ma'am uh, uh is there increase and i know with pandemic we were looking at the taxes you know that we got from the millage uh was there any consideration that you had to look at uh from the state or to see where we are now with that Yes, ma'am. And I do have a slide on that. I'll uh, bring that up after I finish this budget. But okay. I'm glad you asked that. We do have, um, I have an ADM slide that I want to share with you on our, uh, actually a 10 year history. Okay. And we'll take a look at that. And I want to show you where we're predicted to be this year, um, based on the numbers that we've collected at the beginning of the year. So okay. I do have that information. I can share it with you. Okay. okay thank you. All right. Now, uh, under the expenses, we have uh, 72 million of our budget is budgeted for salary and fringe, and that's 72.84%. And that uh, the other category is everything else other than salary and fringe. And you can see 
uh, oh, you know, nearly three quarters of our budget is uh, tied up in salary and fringe expenses. So if we look at this, our bonded debt is uh, about 11.4% of our budget. So these two together are about 84%. Then we have purchase services, supplies, equipment, and dues and fees. So um, between our mortgage payment on our uh, buildings and salary and fringe, we have about 85%, 84 to 85% of our budget accounted for there. Here's a little graphical representation. So this shows the salary and fringe, the bonded debt right here, and then everything else that we pay falls into these smaller categories. Now, let me, uh, I also included in this, uh, in the email that I sent to you all, the, now this is a state aid notice and this is for 1718. <clears throat> and this one is 1819. This one is 1920. And this one is 2021. This is our current one. So I put all, I put four years worth of history there so you could compare some of the numbers that we're looking at here. Um, but I do want to, here's to your question, Ms. Williams, you'd ask about student enrollment. And I think it's something that I need to put in front of the board and put on your radar. Uh, you see, this is a 10 year history and this is our student um, three quarter ADM enrollment. And you'll notice last year we ended up at 8,1732. That's where we ended last year. Um, we have a list of students this year. We have a list of students that are attending virtual and we have a list of students that are attending um, on site. And when you add those two together, uh, along with our day treatment students, we have 7,612 students attending. So we have some students that are missing that um, I have, that's been reported to cabinet and I believe there's a plan in place with using uh, our PEPs at each school and they're devising a list of those students and they're going to do house visits and they're trying to find them because we have verified that they are not enrolled in other schools. So they're our school, they're our students, but they're not enrolled in school with us. And if that number were to materialize and become accurate for the first three quarters, you can see that's gonna be a significant decrease in students. And that will also translate to a significant decrease for funding for next year. Yeah. So what I want to do is put that we are, we are working on a list right now of actively trying to find these students and get them back in school. But if this number materializes and there's no, um, there's no move on the Department of Education to, since this is a COVID year, to maybe base our funding off of a prior year, if they don't make any changes and we don't find the students, there is this, uh, uh, loss of funding that we could realize of about one and a half million dollars. Now what that means is around December, November or December, uh, we're going to have to bring an update to you and let you know about that 400 student loss. We need to know if we found them. We need to know if not, how many are still missing and we need to know exactly how we're going to deal with that budget shortfall in the next year. And that may, re, that may translate into reduction in staffing positions. So I just want you, I wanna put that, I'm not saying that's what we have to do right now. I'm saying, I wanna put this on your plate. I want you to be aware of it. We're working on it, but we'll have to bring you an update and we'll have to devise a plan on how we're gonna deal with that if we have a significant decre decrease that, that does materialize. And remember, um, the way this works, 
these numbers are actually the first, those are numbers that are determined by taking the membership on day one, day two, day three, day four, all the way through the end of the third quarter. They take all of those membership days, they add them up and they do an average. That's why it's called that three quarter average. So right, as of right now, we have a low enrollment, but if we were to find the students and get them enrolled, we could mitigate any loss in funding. Uh, but come November, December, we've got to start looking to make sure that we have a plan in place to address funding decreases for the next year if we have a loss in student enrollment. And uh, oh. I'm sorry. I was just going to ask, how long do we have to to find the students? Uh, let well, me, let me oh, ask, go ahead. Dr. Uh, Mr. Brown, let me ask yes. that. Dr. Redis, we have until Wednesday, September 30th. Uh, that's why we've been pushing the campaign, <laughs> mask on, we're all gone. You've seen a lot of that that we've been pushing. Uh, we even did, I did a radio interview today, help pushing that ad, trying to get those kids to mask on or log on so that we can uh, recruit some of that number. So, uh, but come Wednesday, at the end of the day, Thursday morning, the ADE will take a October 1 snapshot. On October the 5th, they're gonna come back and take another snapshot. So it's very, uh, very, very imperative that we all echo the same thing about pushing these 400 kids that we're about missing. And I will tell you that we have had some success. So the numbers are- I was about to ask. We have had some success because I went to just about all the schools. Uh, for example, I'm gonna pick on, I think, uh, uh, I can't think of which one, it went brain dead that quick, but I, I wanna say it was, uh, Sixth, sixth grade campus uh, on Friday that I went to. I think they're down to about 12, 12 students out of, they think they were missing about 48 or 50. So they're down about 12. So some schools are, we're having some success. I think high school is down like 31 students, if I'm not mistaken. So we're having some success, but we just gotta continue to push to relocate those kids and get them to come and register virtually or on site. And, and I'll follow up with what Dr. McGee said. So there's two, there's two different issues at stake here. One is special program funding. So there are some, uh, there are some programs that, uh, that use the October 1 enrollment uh, to calculate funding. Um, and then our um, funding using the ADM actually uses three quarters of an ADM. So it could be that we uh, find some of the students by Wednesday and then we find even more of the students after Wednesday for those programs that are determined by the October 1 count, they would not benefit from finding the additional students. But our overall funding, um, the one that uh, is driven, let me just roll back up here, um, this number right here on line 10, three quarter ADM count, that drives our funding for a lot of our state funding that comes in. This number here, as, as we get students to come back to us, uh, that number can increase all the way through the, the end of the third quarter. So even if we don't find them all by Wednesday, the more we find, the sooner the better. And then every student we add by the end of the third quarter will help our funding as well. So I just wanted to bring that up. There's, there's two different, sort of two different deadlines working there. And it depends on what program of funding you're talking about. Mr. Brown? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Ms. Campbell? I think I, 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 think I, I didn't hear her, her question. I'm sorry. I, I think she asked, were they elementary or secondary? Um, let me, Dr. Let me, do you want to answer that question? Yeah, uh, there's a combination of both. I think it might be a little bit uh, slightly more uh, elementary than secondary, but this is a kind of close. Uh, it's almost 50-50, but it's uh, 
But I will say then, again, a lot of schools have already recouped a lot of those students. For example, Metal Park is the one I was uh, thinking of just a minute ago. Metal Park actually was missing about 60. I think they were down to like within their 10, uh, the team. So somewhere between 15 and 10, now they're, they're missing. So it's just a matter of us continuing to try to recoup those kids. And, and again, it's very important that we adhere to those deadlines that Mr. Brown stated, October 1. But more importantly, uh, the third quarter, we need to get those kids because that's going to be our base of our source of funding. Mr. Brown? Yes, ma'am. Uh, and you mentioned this, and I know some teachers may be listening to this, but to please understand, nobody's going to be terminated at this time. And that is something down the road. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But right now, that is nothing that we are looking forward to because we're looking more forward to getting the students back. Yes. So they can be rest, okay? That is correct, yes. Uh, we're, we're not talking about anything at this point. I'm just bringing the board. I'm giving you all of the information here so that you all, right. you know, just know that it's an issue, that we're addressing it. And if for some reason there is a shortfall, then we'll have to make a plan on how we're going to address those shortfalls. Okay, then. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I've also attached the annual financial review uh, that Mr. Beardsley had um, given to you all, and uh, he's previously presented that. Uh, but it applies directly to the budget um, in, in that uh, report. He's got the assessed valuation uh, for the district and as you can see in the real estate category in all three categories um, there is good news there. All three of those have increased um, for real estate, personal property, and utilities. And there for a while we had actually seen a de decrease in personal property but we're actually seeing that increase again this year, so we're proud to see that. Um, <clears throat> also, our millage rate is at 48.3. It has been since 2012, and that has uh, continued. Also, the this is the local collection revenue, and as you can see, we collected projecting uh, 38.6, and that's a 96% um, collection rate. You can see here real estate is the blue, personal property red, utilities yellow. Okay. This is our bonded debt, and as you can see, we have four bonds, uh, four bonds here. We have a total of 12.7, about $12.8 million in bond payments scheduled for this year. That's in Mr. Um, Beardsley's packet. We have no lease purchase. And uh, on this page is next to the last page of Mr. Beardsley's um, information there's he actually has four years of uh, contrasting uh, the ADM so this top line will match the will match the graph the ADM graph that we talked about um, state foundation funding you can see a trend there over four years this is ALE you can see a trend there ELL there's the four-year trend. ESA, formerly NSL, you see the trend there. Professional development, bonded assistance, and then there's some other. Um, and then here's our declining enrollment. So you'll see that um, that was 1718. We received 51,000, and then in uh, 1920 we received one million dollars in. Um, declining enrollment, and then this year we have 241,000 in declining enrollment. And what that's related specifically to 
prior year student enrollment decreases and they give us that money for one year as a budget safety net, but we're expected to, um, you know, reduce expenditures to the point to where we compensate for the loss in revenue. Okay. And then I have one other uh, slide I thought I would share with you. Some of you in the past have asked about particular funds. Um, and what I've done here, the what's printed, these are federal funds. So um, what's printed in print is this year. And I've, uh, that's last year's uh, statement. And I've penciled in the preliminary allocations for this year. <clears throat> and then I've noted for each fund whether there's a decrease or an increase. So let's just uh, thumb through these and then I'll turn it over to you all for additional questions. So I've got Title I. Uh, we're showing that there's a $38,000 decrease in allotment for this year. In Homeless, I'm showing that there's a $5,000 allotment decrease for this year. In special education 6B, that's Ms. Alexander's funds, there's a $106,000 decrease for this year. Um, in federal preschool, I'm showing a $464 decrease. In Title IIA, there's a $25,000 decrease. In Title III, I'm showing a slight increase of $5,100 for Title III. That's our ELL uh, program. Aware Arkansas, that is a, that's a grant that we received last year. Um, unless we apply for it, that's one-time grant funding. So uh, it would not apply here. Uh, ESSER, this is the CARES Act funding. Um, we did get that last year unless Congress comes back and uh, gives additional funding. We're not scheduled to get any this year. That's one-time funding. And then Title IV, I'm showing a decrease of 16356 So the point I want to make is a lot of these federal funds are dependent on your student enrollment. Uh, so as your enrollment declines, so will uh, your allotments for the federal funding. Now, I wanted to point out here, there's been, you all have asked some uh, questions about CARES Act. Right. I wanted to share with you, the CARES Act budget to begin with for this year was 3.012 3 million. That's what we had left and carried forward. We have scheduled expenses this year from the CARES Act of about 1.5 million. So we do have additional CARES Act funding left. Um, to use for our needs. As of right now, it's uh, about 1.5 million left in the CARES Act at this time. So I'll turn it over to you, Ms. Williams, to see if you all have any additional questions. And if not, I ask that you approve our budget for fiscal 21 year. Okay. Ms. Campbell, do you have any questions? Uh, Ms. Huggins, absent. Dr. Reddits? No question. Uh, Mr. Steele, absent. Ms. Temple? Uh, yes, I have one quick question, Brian. Um, I, it's the pattern to use the number that we're funded on for this year's budget, so the 8,000 students versus the 7,000 some odd students we're experiencing, correct? So, yes, you're correct. So, this year's numbers will fund the fiscal year 22. So this year for fiscal 21 budget, we are using fiscal year 20 student enrollment. So we're using last year's three quarter average for this year's funding. This year's three quarter average will fund next year's budget. Okay, and I guess you probably didn't do this, but if you ran this year's numbers, how, how um, would we already have to be cutting or would we still be breaking even on these numbers? Well, the number, that graph that we uh, looked at, let me put that back up here. Um, if I can get to it. Uh, 
There it is. Okay. So um, to answer your question, Ms. Temple, this uh, data point right here, the uh -huh. 8,017.32 8, for 2020, that is the basis. Here's that 8,017. That one is the basis for our 2021 funding. So this 7,006 right now, that was the last count I had that was official um, prior to this board meeting. So this number here would be the basis for next year's funding. So we would get declining, uh, declining enrollment funding that would help offset. It's not a dollar for dollar um, loss, but it is enough to uh, help schools uh, balance their budget for one year if need be, if things are contractually obligated. So this number okay. here, if it materializes, becomes the basis of funding for next year's state aid notice. Okay, well, let me see, if, let me try to rephrase my question. Okay. If you use the 7612 this year, based on what you have budgeted, how short would we be? Do you know? Oh, about we... a, probably about a million and a half. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, and now I understand your question. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yes, ma'am. Miss Welcome. No, I'm all set. Okay. Uh, Mr. S uh, Brown, uh, a very good report, sir. And Thank you, uh, I think you answered our questions for us. And this report, you'll have to return in by when? when it we'll is. submit it by Wednesday. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Board members, at this time, I will officially like to have a motion that we accept the 2021 budget for this coming, for, for the year 2021, right? All right. Um, board members? Madam President. Yes. I so move that we accept the 20, uh, 2020 21 budget workshop. I need a second. 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 It has been moved and properly second that we accept the budget for 2021. Those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? No. So the motion is carried. Thank you, Mr. Brown, for an excellent report, okay? Thank you, Ms. Williams. Thank you, board members. Okay. And at this time, uh, Ms. Temple, you can be excused. Okay. Oh, I still have time. I can, I can wait till, okay. till one, but thank you. Okay. Informational item. Dr. McGee is going to come at this time to present our annual report that will go to the community. And it's on page 36. Dr. McGee. Uh, thank you, Madam President and members on the board uh, for allowing me to come to share this annual report. Brian, do I have access to uh, share my screen? Well, I guess I do. Let me share my screen here. Um, so this is our annual report that, that uh, just kind of go uh, to the community. Uh, this, these are based on last year's numbers. Uh, so I had Mr. Brown, you will see some of the same numbers that Mr. Brown presented in his previous report. We know our vision is world-class schools for world-class students. Uh, our mission that we're going to provide, uh, uh, we're going to provide for achievement, accountability, acceptance, and the necessary assets in the pursuit of each student's educational success. Uh, some of our accomplishments, the, uh, we saw our center of excellence, they received an award here at the Arkansas State Seal of Our Literacy Award and Certificate. We kind of had a new partner to help us with the uh, innovative, uh, the virtual learning and our learning management system. Our division, our special program received a $20,000 grant to use digital programs to educate our students with significant cognitive, uh, cognitive disabilities. Crestwood, we know our A school, was selected by the U.S. Department of Education for the Federal STEMS Project. Uh, also, uh, we kind of initiated the four NGL model within our high schools that kind of help us set up some academies and pathways. And then, of course, we know we had COVID-19. Uh, we know we had the reopen task force. We know we have on-site and virtual instructional options. We know we have the planning doctrine. Again, we have our charging to learn our school re-entry plan. Uh, 
Uh, so this is just a brief report. So one of the biggest things that we got to understand, I want to go back to the enrollment because it's got to be very, very important to us. Right now, currently, we're sitting at 7612. Mr. Brown kind of shared again the 8,712 last year. Uh, that's a decline, you can see, from the previous 18 to 19, 8,086. 2017, 18, 8,380. And 16 and seven, uh, 17, 8,362. So again, please, please help us continue to push that campaign to get those kids in for their funding for next year. Uh, we know our demographics here, make up here, African-American 59.4, and all of this is, can be pulled off the uh, state website from my school info, uh, American Indian, Asian, uh, two or more races, our white population, uh, Hispanic and Hawaiian. You see those numbers there. And lastly, here we want to talk about our taxpayers' investment here. The average teacher's salary we have here is within 10 years of experience is $53,495.68. Uh, our expenditure per student, $11,158.58. Of course, we know our millage rate is 48.3. Overall revenue we had last year was probably 101. 633, 31, 12, and 83 cents. Some of our expenditures, you see salary and benefits, 74,946. Right, you see that uh, million, I'm sorry, I said thousand million building fund. You see that and the debt service and the total expenditures right there. Uh, so that's just a brief report that we have to submit on behalf of where we were last year that we want to go out to our public as just informational. Those numbers I hear Mr. Brown pull from last year's funding source that you can see right here. And our goals for this year, uh, that we, number one, we wanna focus on literacy across all grade levels and content areas to help ensure that there is an increase in the number of students who are reading on or above grade level. We also wanna increase the student performance across all the schools. We wanna address the needs of students and the student groups in order to provide a fair, equitable education to our students. And then we want to provide a safe and healthy learning environment for all of our students and staff. And lastly, our last one, we want to strengthen our communication between the district and our community. Uh, so that is our goals for this year. Uh, and that's it, board members. I just want to come and give you this brief report that we want to upload on our website that go out to, uh, that can be there for information only. Uh, I think that's it. Let me stop sharing here. Okay. Board members, uh, any questions or concerns? That we uh, yes, ma'am. Dr. Horton. McGee, is this information passed on to Dr. Poluski? Uh Yes, he's aware of that. Yes, he is aware. Okay. He, he and I are in constant communication about everything that, that's going on. Amazing. You're amazing. Okay, so let's go back to that real number. Um, so I see the plan. I, I see that, you know, we're using our PEPs, but how, how do we, like, realistically, how are we going to get these kids back? And in addition, we need to increase for new growth, honestly. So is that a conversation that we're having at the roundtable? Uh, we, we're, we're constantly having all sorts of conversations walking from how we're going to recruit those kids and also what we can do to continue to grow uh, our district. So we want to definitely communicate. We're going to continue keeping that conversation moving forward. Uh, the, one of the best things that we found out, as I stated earlier, that those numbers are probably high. We just got to run a report. Many of the schools are reporting that a lot of those kids are, after that first initial campaign, they're starting to come in. So we just got to see exactly, and I plan to get Kathy run another report, uh, maybe to later today or tomorrow to see exactly where we are so we can kind of compare and contrast from last week or for the previous uh, past couple of weeks. Um, okay, will you see to it that we get those final numbers, please, sir? And I, I appreciate you. I definitely will and I share with the board. Okay. And thank, thank you. you, Dr. McGee, uh, for you and your staff working to get this report out to the paper. And uh, at this time, we are doing very well. It's just now 1242, and we've had a very good meeting. Before we closed, are there did, any did, comments? Did, did that not, oh, that was just information. I'm sorry. I thought it 
you need to vote, but I'm sorry, I see his information, my bad. Yeah, we don't have to vote on the annual report. Uh, the ADE doesn't require that because we're pulling numbers that they've already given us. So I got it, I see. Thank hey, you, sir. You're welcome. I appreciate all of you administrative staff are for coming together and getting this information out. And if you need us the, as a board to come again for anything uh, that we need to come together, uh, Dr. McGee, just give us a call. Uh, I know during this pandemic, a lot of stuff that's going on, and uh, but whatever it is, just give us a call and we'll make sure that we will meet. You know what I'm saying? We'll do. And if we need to meet, and if Mr. Pulaski has any uh, concerns or he feels he needs to meet with us, it's no problem. We're all trying to be together, okay? Well, thank you, Madam President, and members of the board. Okay, then. If there's nothing further, uh, may we have an adjournment, please? Yes, ma'am. I move that we adjourn. It has been moved and properly second that we adjourn. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion is carried. And thank you, and have a fantastic Thursday. I'll see you Thursday at 530, please. Just, Stay safe. It's just a general workshop. And the only two things on there are just to talk about security and also